the mole actually helps us connect two things. Uh, it helps connect the number of particles that might be present in a sample and it links it to the mass of that substance that would be present. Going back to carbon as our example, so if we had one mole of carbon, we would know that's equivalent to this number of carbon atoms. And just based on the previous information, we know that one mole is going to be equivalent to 12.01 grams. So you can see how the mole allows us to connect number of particles to a mass. And we can develop a simple formula to actually link these things together. So to link the number of moles to the mass and also to the molar mass. So this is it here. We can see that this is the mole formula. The number of moles for a particular element uh, or a particular substance is equal to its mass divided by the molar mass or the mass of one mole of that uh, particular substance. We use symbols to represent each of these, uh, I guess, uh, particular aspects. So the number of moles, we already know uh, we use N to represent it, and it has the units of mole, M-O-L. In terms of mass, we use a lowercase m to represent mass, and mass is measured in grams. The molar mass, represented by capital M, is measured in grams per mole, which is also equivalent to this representation here, grams times moles to the power of negative one. We can take that formula and we can summarize it here. So N is equal to little m divided by big M. This here shows you a triangle that you can use to solve for any one of those three aspects. Keep in mind that we can always work out the molar mass, but it means that we can actually just simply cover whichever one we're trying to work out and then just see what we're left with. And perhaps in class we can go through some examples of how we can do that. Let's see how we can use the, the mole formula. So this first example, we want to look at how we can calculate the number of moles of silicon atoms in an 80.0 gram sample. What I've actually obtained from the periodic table is the molar mass of silicon. And just remember that if we have a look at the periodic table, we can actually extract the, this number here, sorry, for silicon, 28.09. This is the relative atomic mass. Now we know that this is also equivalent to the molar mass as well in grams per mole for silicon. So the molar mass of silicon is 28.09 grams per mole. We're going to now use our mole formula. So that's n is equal to little m over big M. We have both the mass and the molar mass uh, recorded here. So we just need to substitute those values in. That's equal to 80.0 divided by 28.09. You go ahead and put that in your calculator and you can end up getting a number equal to 2.85 moles. Now keep in mind that I've actually rounded this off to three significant figures and that's because my mass was given to one, two, three significant figures. My molar mass is given to four significant figures. So my answer can only have as many significant figures as the uh, mass here, which is recorded to three. Your answer in your calculator is going to be 2.849 something rather. And uh, if you need to use that uh, number, keep in mind that you just want to keep that in your calculator. Second part of this uh, example question is that from here, we might be asked to calculate the number of silicon atoms in the 80 gram sample the 80.0 gram sample. So to do this, we actually need to use the information from part A, and that was the number of moles of the silicon atoms. And remember that we looked at how you can calculate the number of particles given the number of moles. So the number of particles, or in this case, the number of silicon atoms, is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the amount present in one mole. So this is the Avogadro constant here. 
we're going to go ahead and substitute our answers in and it's a good practice if you just leave your answers in your calculator and then you just use them in the next part of your calculation. You can see I've rounded up here but I didn't actually round, uh, round up in my calculator. So as long as you do that and then in your final answer that's when you want to round off. We've got here 1.72 times 10 to the 24 and there aren't any units because we're just talking about numbers of atoms and that's recorded to three significant figures. Our second example, we're going to talk about helium and in this case we're told the number of helium atoms. So we've got 2.35 times 10 to the 23 helium atoms. The first part of this question asks us to calculate the number of mole of helium atoms. So let's go ahead and do this now. We're going to use our formula um, and we actually established this before as well. So given the number of particles we can work out the number of moles is equal to the number of atoms divided by the amount present in one mole. So we're going to substitute those values in. So 2.35 times 10 to the 23 divided by the amount in one mole and our answer gives us 0 0.039 moles. We'll go to the second part of this question. Calculate the mass of helium atoms. So keep in mind that we actually worked out the number of moles in part A. So I'm just going to go ahead and state that. We also need to be able to work out what the molar mass is for helium so that we can use the formula to calculate mass. If we go back to the periodic table, we can see that helium's up the top here and helium has a relative atomic mass of 4.003. So it therefore has a molar mass of 4.003 grams per mole. So I've just written that here, so the molar mass is equal to 4.003 grams per mole and with a bit of rearranging of the mole formula we can actually work out the formula for mass and so that ends up giving us uh, little m is equal to n times big M. The mass is equal to the number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. We have both of these values so what we can do is just substitute them in and uh, we'll look at doing that now. So 0 0.039 multiplied by 4.003. Remember to keep those answers in your calculator so you don't have to round them off. And in this case, we get an answer of 0.16 grams. Now I've recorded this to two significant figures, but in reality, given this data here, we could actually record to three significant figures. So that concludes the second video for 1.3 on quantities of atoms. Uh, thank you very much and I'll see you guys next time.